I want to share just a couple of minutes with you a thought that the Lord has put on my heart, and it's really based on a prayer request that came in uh, from Eastern Ohio. And the prayer request is for a godly school superintendent facing pressure for saying no to a father wanting to bring his son to a father-daughter banquet. And because of it, he's facing legal threats. What have we become as a society? It's just absolutely insane. The fact that a father would want to bring his son to a banquet as his daughter just absolutely stuns me. You know, the Bible says when you enter into the fields of the fatherless, their Lord will rise up and defend them. God himself will do this. And I'm thinking about Christian people now who are facing legal threats for simply taking a moral stand, saying essentially your son is not your daughter and therefore you're not bringing him to a father-daughter banquet. And because of it, the superintendent is facing legal threats. And that's that's where our society has gone to. That's what we become as a people. We are completely upside down. Evil is now good and good is now evil. Right is now wrong and wrong is now right. And as it says in Romans chapter one, if a nation and a people who held the truth in unrighteousness, they had it, but they didn't hold it with a, an honest or a sincere heart, that nation will be given over to a darkened mind. And when you continue to read in Romans one, you'll see all the behaviors that the nation will begin to exhibit, and you can literally catalog them in America today. In the last several years, it's been, it's been stunning uh, to see the moral uh, landslide that we are presently experiencing. I was led today to passages, two passages of scripture, but starting in Acts chapter four, is where Peter and John were <clears throat> called into account for speaking the name Jesus. And the healing that speaking his name was bringing into people's lives. And because of it, they were threatened by the authorities of that time. So history really does repeat itself. We are in a situation today where we are exactly where they were. We're being threatened. If you stand for what is right, if you say there is a right way, if you speak the name Jesus, if you believe in him, you're going to find yourself threatened. If you haven't been already, you will be in the not too distant future. So will we. Now, being let go, it says they went to their own companions. This is Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 23. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Now, here was the response of the Christian community of that time. It says, when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord. And said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. This is exactly where we're at today in society. Kings of the earth are taking their stand. The rulers are gathering together against the Lord and against Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. It seemed like all of society was acquiescing to this viewpoint that we want to be rid of this Christ. We don't want his rules. We don't want his standards. We don't want to obey him. We don't want him to be our God. We don't want anybody reminding us that he is our God. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it. We don't want anybody telling us that there's a better way or a way of truth that everyone has to follow. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. In other words, here's what they prayed. God, they can't do anything unless you allow it. Because you are the one who created the heavens, the earth, the sea. You established the boundaries of all things. You are God. There is no other God. There's no other authority. There's no other power. They may seem to be uh, victorious, but it's only for a season. Because ultimately, you are the one who determines the end of all things. Amen. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. I don't know about you, but I feel that that's how we've got to start praying again in our generation. 
God, stretch your hand out through us as your people and begin to do that which only could be done by the power of God. Begin to deliver those that are oppressed. Begin to heal those that are sick. Begin to bring back and regather things that have been lost that in a way that it can only be attributed to you. Start moving through us as your body in the divine. We are not called to argue the reality of Jesus Christ. We are called to present an irrefutable testimony of the fact that he is God, that he is alive. You and I, are that's what we're called to be. We're called to be brought out of all of the limitations of our own abilities or lack thereof, and God begins to flow through us and do what only God can do. Yes. Now it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the, God, the word of God with boldness. Now I wondered why. Why did you shake the place, God? That was the question that came into my heart as I was reading it. Why did you shake it? You didn't need to do that. I mean, the fact that you could have just filled them with the Holy Spirit. Why this shaking? Why this trembling? Why this tremor? And I found the answer in Psalm 18. It's where David, before he became king, or after he's, he's recounting the time when he had to run from evil. And in verse three, he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Now here's, here's the situation David found himself in. The pangs of death surrounded me. And the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. In other words, God Almighty, what happened? From singing in the palace, from being accepted in places of power to suddenly being pursued with threats of death and banishment and everything else that came, David was saying, all of this, it came suddenly. Did you, do you find, as I do, it came suddenly? I know there's been an encroachment of evil in this society for probably years, but there seemed to be this sudden bursting forth as a dam breaking and this, this baptism of, of confusion hitting the nation. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me and the snares of death confronted me. In other words, it, it just seemed like that which represents death was everywhere. That, that which I knew in my heart, or I know in my heart, leads to death. An eternal separation from God was all around. And he said, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. There's a point where you and I start to cry out and say, oh God, you have to come and do what only you can do. I can't do this. There's nothing I can do in my smallness. There's nothing, my voice can't make a difference, but oh God, you can. You have to come and make a difference. And he, as scripture says, he heard my voice from his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. And here's the reason. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. There's a point where evil has just taken one step too far and has aroused the anger of God. You'll see it all the way through the scriptures. Even at the cross, when the wrath of God was poured out upon his own son for the sins of humankind, when Jesus breathed his last and said, it is finished, the scripture says there was an earthquake at that moment. The anger of God poured out upon his own son and thank God lifted off of those of us who have turned to him as Lord and Savior. The earth shook and trembled because darkness had taken one step too far. You see, the shaking came when the threat came against the testimony of Christ through those that were ordained to be a testimony for him. And when the shaking happened, it talks to us in Psalm 18 as you follow it through about a, a literal battle in the heavens that is not visible. David had it by revelation, but it's not visible. God came down and began to fight before anybody became aware of it because somebody cried out to him. One more time in history, things had gotten just too dark and the ire of God was aroused and he rose up not as the lamb of God, but as the lion of Judah. One more time, there are seasons, there are times where Evil has just taken one step too far, especially against the people of God and the testimony of Christ. 
and the shaking begins. And David says, he sent from above and he took me, drew me out from my strong enemy and from those who hated me. He gave him light for his lamp. He gave him the power to run against a troop. He gave him the ability to leap over all. He said, by my God, I can leap over a wall. He gave him the power to leap over all the boundaries that were being placed around him. Just like the authorities in Peter and John's day says, you shall not teach nor preach in this name anymore. But with that threat, that wall that was being placed around there, you're going to go to jail. You're going to be fined. You're going to be in prison. All the threats they could think of placing around them. So they went into a prayer meeting and said, give us more of what got us into trouble in the first place. It was the power of God that got us into trouble. So we ask you for more of the power of God. We ask you for a deeper boldness to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. (laughs) David said, God armed me with strength and made my way clear before me. God gave me feet like the feet of a deer and gave me the power to climb these mountains that were being set before me. He taught my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And not only did I rest, David said, in a defensive position, but I took the offense and I began to pursue my enemies and I overtook them. And I didn't turn back until I had triumphed over them. It came to the point where they pleaded for mercy from God himself, but God wouldn't hear them. And this is the God that we serve. This is the God that we pray to tonight. And I think it's time that we recognize one more time that God wants to shake the place where we are at this moment in history. When they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken. That's been the cry of my heart all week. Oh, God, shake this place. God Almighty, stretch out your hand one more time. Give us your Holy Spirit and give us the power to stand as living witnesses of who you are. Give us the power to say, Jesus will heal you and to stretch out our hand and believe it. Give us the power to say, Jesus will set you free and stretch out our hand and believe it. Give us the power to say Jesus will set your mind in right order and give us the power to believe it. Give us the power to speak the word of God, every promise in the word of God, everything that is given to us in the word of God. God, give us the power to speak it and not draw back in cowardice under the threats of this generation. Will there be a cost to this? Yes, there will be for some of us. But I want you to think of the cost if we don't do anything. Not necessarily for us because we're not supposed to live here to preserve ourselves. We are here as a living testimony of the one who went to a cross for all of humankind that they may turn from sin and be saved. That's the cry of my heart tonight. That We pray for this godly superintendent who just had the courage, thank God, to say no. Your son is not your daughter. Somebody has to stop this insane parade in America today. We have drifted into spiritual insanity. And so I'm going to ask Elder David to come and pray for this superintendent and for many more like him to rise up and start declaring truth and start stretching out our hand, believing that no matter the cost to us personally, it will bring healing into our society. And start praying, God, give me your Holy Spirit. I love the fact that Jesus said, if you know how to give good good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So I'm not content to live in mediocrity when the power of God is promised to me. I'm not content to cower down and let evil steamroll. We prayed for the children in Afghanistan that are being sexually abused, and it's, it's the norm. What about America, where our children are being confused about their sexuality? Somebody somewhere has to stand up. Somebody somewhere has to say, God, give me your Holy Spirit. Somebody somewhere has to say, Lord, stretch out your hand through me and give me the boldness to speak your word. And to believe, God, that you can, through my life, make a difference in this generation. That's the cry of my heart. And let it be the cry of your heart. Let it be the cry of this prayer meeting tonight and those that are with us online. 
Just let it be the cry, oh God, would you stretch out your hand and heal and signs and wonders, let them be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. God, would you look upon their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness we may speak your word. Would you give us the courage, oh God, to take a stand for what we know to be true. Would you give us the courage, oh God, by filling us with your spirit from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And would you stretch your hand out through us and through our lives make a difference in our generation. Oh God, let that be the cry of our heart tonight.